Hello everyone and welcome back to Mooseville Off Grid. Today we're going to be talking about computers and astrophotography and why you need a computer for astrophotography and what type of computers are there and we're also going to do an unboxing of the Asus Space Edition 14 inch OLED display laptop computer really a special computer that's primarily designed for space geeks people who love astronomy and space and whatnot so first let's get into why do we need a computer for astrophotography well back in the old days and by the old days I mean back in the 1900s the early 1900s up until roughly the year 2000 when you know digital cameras became more and more prevalent it was very common for an astronomer a professional astronomer to sit in a cage and actually guide the telescope very carefully on one single star now the telescope does have an electronic drive called a clock drive and this you know follows the rotation of the earth and keeps the stars somewhat centered but because the fact that the telescope is magnifying things extremely it's very important to guide on one particular star very exactly so that you don't end up with gigantic bloated stars and fuzzy images and things such as that and back in the old days it was not unusual for a professional astronomer to sit in the cage for five or six hours during a cold night very carefully guiding on one particular star well times have changed and now we have electronic devices that can actually fix onto a star and we have computer software that can guide on that particular star it can send pulses to the drive mechanisms of your mount to make corrections to keep that star exactly in the center all the time in fact it can do this completely on its own while you're sound asleep in bed and it does this through using various computer programs and a guide camera so typically you will have a telescope and then on the back of the telescope you'll have uh, an astro camera some type of digital camera that goes on the back and then you'll have a guide scope up on top of the telescope and then that guide scope will also have a camera attached to it what is known as a guide camera and that guide camera will send the image directly into a computer and then a computer program will send the corrections directly to the mount to be able to keep that star exactly in the center it's also possible that you could have what is known as an off axis guider this is a right angle type of device it fits into the back of the telescope and the camera fits into the back of the guider the same way it usually would in the back of the telescope but it also has a right angle tube coming off of it and in this right angle tube down at the bottom is a prism that you can center onto a star and then on that right angle tube you can place a guide camera and that allows you to guide on a star at the same magnification that your camera is actually taking a picture through the telescope so you get much more accurate type of guiding when you use a guide scope up on top generally the guide scope is much smaller than the telescope itself and so it will not be magnifying the stars as much as your telescope would and so your guiding is not going to be quite as precise as 
if you were guiding through the telescope with something like an off-axis guider. So enough of the theory and the basic talk about this. Today I got in the mail a computer that will mount on my telescope and I am not a computer geek. I'm not going to sit here and tell you all of the specifications of this particular computer and things like that. I will put a link down in the comment section of a video by a channel called Patriot Astro and he does appear to be a computer geek. His name is Chad and this is the little computer that he recommended in his video. It's called a Melee, M-E-L-E, -E, Quieter 3 computer. And you can see it's relatively small, just a little bit larger than, say, a cell phone. And on this particular device, it has a couple of HDMI ports. It has an Ethernet port. It has a USB 3 port here and a place to plug in uh, headphones and also a 12 volt power uh, port here and over on this side it has three more USB 3 ports for a total of four USB 3 ports and then here on this particular side there's just an on off button so as you can see it's pretty light and efficient and what this will be used for is controlling the telescope mount and receiving the data that comes through the telescope cameras. Let me go ahead and get a couple of cameras and show you what astrophotography cameras look like. Okay, one type of astro camera looks exactly like what you would expect a DLSR, a digital single lens reflex type of camera. Uh, you know, you would normally stick a lens on, on this and take pictures of your family and, and landscapes and things like that. But one of the disadvantages of your typical camera is it has a special filter installed in the camera that forces the camera to only allow in certain types of light. And one thing you can do is to send your camera off and have that filter removed. And that's one of the things I've done with my camera. So this one now is specially made only for astrophotography. And of course this can be hooked up via a bunch of cables and whatnot to your computer. So there's also astrophotography cameras that don't look anything like the cameras you're used to. This is an astrophotography camera here. It's a ZWO ASI 290mm and I know that's a lot of numbers. The ZWO is the name of the company. The ASI is how they designate their cameras. 290 is just this particular camera's numerical code and the MM means that it's a monochrome camera. And this camera would screw on to a series of adapters and then it would screw directly into your telescope. And we see inside here the sensor for the camera itself. Now there are other types of cameras that are a little bit larger than this. This particular one is primarily made for planetary work. There are other ones that are primarily made for deep sky type photography and these are called cooled cameras. They actually have an electronic cooler attached to the camera to be able to reduce the temperature of the sensor and keep it at a steady level so that you don't get as much noise and stuff. But we won't go into that right now. Now this does have the ability to hook up a, a USB 3 cable and there's another port here to be able to hook up another kind of cable. And all of these feed directly in to this little computer and then computer programs that you download off the internet 
allow you to control these cameras. This is another camera that looks very similar to the first one I had. This is the ASI 290 MM. This one is an ASI 462 MC. This particular camera is a color camera. So in other words, the images coming out of the 290 would be only black and white and you would use a series of filters to be able to make a color image. This camera, the 462, will yield an actual color picture out of it. So there's all different types of cameras and just like the 290, it has hookups for a USB 3 and various things like that. In a future video, we'll talk more about cameras and the different features and what they do and various things like that. Today we're primarily just going over the computers that are hooked up to our telescopes. And typically folks will have one computer for the telescope and then another computer for processing the images. The computer that hooks up to the telescope doesn't need to be all that powerful or all that fast because basically what it's doing is just writing the images from the camera onto a hard drive, an, S, an SSD type of drive, a solid state drive. And then you come back and download those images off the hard drive. However, when you do your processing, then you need a really powerful computer. And today we're going to do the unboxing of what is known as the Asus Space Edition 14-inch OLED laptop computer. You can see it comes in a box, and I'm not really big on unboxing type things. I kind of think you got a box, open the damn thing up. But this particular computer, the company, I think 25 years ago, had sent a number of computers up to Skylab. And this is the 25 year anniversary edition of this computer. And you can see it has the emblem here on the back of Skylab. And let's go over some of the characteristics of this computer. This is not a 25 year old computer. This is a current generation computer. And we're dealing with uh, titanium touch glass. So it has a touch glass screen. It has a 14 inch OLED display. It's an Intel i9 12th generation. It has an SSD hard drive of one terabyte. It has 32 gigabytes of RAM. It has Wi-Fi 16E. Like I say, I'm not a techie. Some of this stuff just over the top of my head. It has USB ports, uh, of course 64-bit. It's made for the US and various other characteristics. Let's get into the unboxing here. So I've never opened this myself either. I just got it in the mail today. I sold one of my camera lenses in order to afford this because this is not cheap. But I wasn't using this particular camera lens and I have plenty of other ones and so I thought it was a pretty good trade. So as you open up the box you could see that uh, it's a very attractive type of presentation here. You have uh, a space edition type of cover here and then we have this box that's inside here and another box that's over here. Let's take this particular box out and we'll see what's in this. We'll take this box for right now and set it aside. So this is the box that I assume has the computer in it. And you can see it's got the Skylab type of emblem here on the outside. 
I've opened a number of computers before. I've never seen one that was quite this nice of a presentation. I feel like you should have a drum roll as you open the box. And here we go. This is the inside of the box. It looks like there's a special Skylab. It says Space Edition on it. And then here going around the Skylab in it, emblem it says we are curious to explore the world and go beyond. Really nice. That's something we'll probably put out in the observatory. And this is the computer. We'll take that out and set that right here. And then down under the computer is this thing wrapped in what appears to be like space bubble wrap. That's real nice. It has a Velcro type of thing on here. And it looks like you get some uh, some decals to uh, spruce up your observatory with. And then uh, we've got a user's guide here. I know I don't usually read instructions, but this would probably be a good idea to read. This is another guide here with background information, privacy, abandoned property, various things like that. And then this appears to be a quick setup guide type of card here. And then we've got a another I don't know who made and who packaged this particular computer, but they put a lot of thought into it. And this is appears to be a special special decal type thing, as you can see. This is commemorating the 25 years of Skylab. It says two decades has passed since the Asus P6300 laptop traveled into outer space, searching for the unknown, testing the boundaries of technology and human courage. Ever since then, Asus laptops have accompanied pioneers to explore beyond the limits, to go in search of incredible. The Asus Zenbook series sees beyond the horizon to explore new worlds and leap boldly into the future with unprecedented power, speed, and imagination. Embrace the spirit of innovation and live a joyful digital life with out-of-the-world technology that the Zenbook series offers. Wow, that's kind of cool, huh? Alright. Well, I'm going to stick this stuff back into the packet here so that uh, it doesn't get lost and then I'll come back to it at a later time. So now we've got the computer itself and let's see if we can figure out how to get this open. Well, like everything else, this is really well thought out. The protective case comes off really nicely. And you can fold it up and save it. Put it back in the box, whatever you want to do with it. And then the outside of the computer has its own little display right here. And you can customize this display, I believe. I haven't actually gone through and read the instruction manual yet, but I have watched a couple of videos. And you can have the display say your own name or 
you know, you could put Moose Vela off grid or whatever you want to do on that little display. Right now, the display has a graphic that you know, celebrates Skylab and kind of an astronaut going from circle to circle. Here on the outside of the thing is various rings here. Let's go ahead and remove some of this stuff so we can see the rings better. Okay, so here you can see the outside of the exterior of the case and uh, this has some type of titanium cover or color or whatever and then there's a Morse code that's in here that has a message in it and you can read through the book to see what that says. Now let's open up the computer and see what we've got. You've got a protective film stored in here and then this is what the computer looks like on the inside and you can see that the pad down here below also has a, num a numerical pad that you can bring up to be able to type in numbers and whatnot. It has a red key for your space bar and also a red key for your power button. Let's take a look at what it has on the outside here. So we've got uh, a USB port here. This appears to be uh, on the other side over here. We've got an HDMI and then we've got what appears to be two USB-C uh, adapters here. And then there's nothing back here on the back and on the bottom just a bunch of cooling fins and things like that. Now I'm told one of the other really special things about this is when you open this up, the top actually raises the keyboard up a little bit. It does appear really sweet. Let's set this over here and we'll go back into our box and see what else is in here. Okay, so we've got another box here wrapped in plastic and from what I understand from watching videos that others have done about this particular computer this little case is specially designed to make a stand for this computer. So I'm, I'm looking here for how to open this. Again, really thoughtfully packaged. So underneath the top portion here we have the power brake. And let's take a look underneath here and see what's inside here. This appears to be a USB adapter of some kind. So we'll read the instructions and see exactly what that's for. And then as I say, this particular thing serves as a little stand for your computer. So you could set it on here and have it at a nice angle where you're able to use it and it can sit right there on top of your desktop and serve you very well and this is going to be the processing computer for my astronomy, for my astrophotography and uh, I'm not really going to go over very much of the loading of the programs or anything like that because this was just a basic unboxing and an introduction to why you need a computer for your telescope. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you would please give us that old thumbs up icon. If you have any comments please leave them down below the video. I'll be delighted to answer anyone who leaves a comment and try to respond to you quickly. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please consider subscribing and we'll see you back here again very soon on Moose Villa Off Grid and Moosehead Observatory. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Wow. Really cool. 
Oh, the speakers are Harman Kardon. Ought to sound good. Alright, well, I've got a lot to do to be able to load the programs on here and start learning how to use this. My current laptop computer is about six years old, so this little laptop ought to scream in comparison to the old one. The old computer will be going to my office and I'll put it on my desk and use it there. And this one will be used here in the tiny house and out in the observatory, in the warm room. So really exciting. And then we'll put this in here. And we'll put our little space thing in here. Looks like we've got a lot of reading to do to be able to uh, learn all about this new computer. So, uh, thanks for sticking around, everybody.